Good morning, Lisa. How are you? I am fantastic. Thank you so much for having me, Michelle. Oh, I'm so excited that you're here. And I'm so grateful that you said yes. <laughs> and um, this year is my year of yes. We, and I, I'm taking the French route because it sounds sexier. So yes. It does. <laughs> Anyways, I uh, wanted to welcome Lisa Breckenridge to the show and um, remind everybody what Opportunity Knox is really about. It's about how do we take, make, create, and evaluate opportunities? So we started this segment in early COVID and it was really to give women uh, hope and purpose and the thought that there are opportunities out there. We know that one in four women are leaving the workforce and um, you know we want them to understand that you can create an opportunity for yourself or there are things to look for. So anyways, I wanted to invite Lisa onto the show because she is a woman who has also made several transitions in her life. She is a lifelong journalist and a life storyteller and a true inspiration, has built something from nothing, her Happily Lisa brand. And um, I've just been so honored to watch her in this journey. So thanks again for coming. Well, thanks for having me. I remember when I first started, I remember we were crossing the street and you said to me, make sure you're really purposeful and let people see who you are and know who you are and really know what you're doing. You know, and I'm like, well, well, of course I'm letting people know what I'm doing, but I think I really took that to heart and continue to let that evolve, you know, and, and sometimes my perfect images become less perfect, you know, and you really kind of pull back the curtain. And um, so I'm so glad that you asked me to come and talk about the things that I've learned and experienced in this, this long life of mine already. Exactly. Well, what I'd love to do is sort of pull the lens back and first, I mean, nobody does it better than themselves as far as like taking somebody through a little bit about, you know, tell me a little bit about how did you get into journalism? Was it your life calling from the beginning? And, you know, just give me a little bit about how do we get to today? Well, um, I was always fascinated by the news, always. And I, when I was in college, we had a field trip over um, to a TV station and it was in Santa Rosa and they were actually giving opportunities for internships. And I was so like, I still wanted to do it, but I went to a very religious church school and we went to church on Saturday. That was our Sabbath. And the internship was on a, the weekend on Saturday. And I thought, I, I can't do that. And so I didn't do it. And then after I graduated and I was actually. <laughs> and this is Zoom. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Sorry, so high school. Brentwood High is going on right here. <laughs> Was in the house. <laughs> I love it. It's amazing. It's okay. totally fun. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I, I graduated. I was actually supposed to get married and this is, I think the opportunity knocks thing comes in perfectly there. Like in my heart, I knew it wasn't right. And I was supposed to work for this family. Um, it was a, a, a big family in the Napa Valley and not in the wine industry, but in something else. And, and as, as I was sitting in that office, trying to learn payables and billables and this and that, I thought, this is not me. And like, he's whoa, not I am not me. doing that. <laughs> and I literally... I honestly think when I was younger, I, I was so smart about so many things. I mean, I think I hopefully still am, but I had the wherewithal to say, I can't do this. I mean, and this is someone I never fought with. There were never problems. I just knew in my heart, it wasn't right. And I think uh, the biggest sign- Very hard at a young age, because a lot yeah. of people would not be able to make that- um, I've always had or distinction. Yeah. really good gut instincts. And I was like, no, no, this isn't going to be right. And I called my mom. She literally came and got me that day. The family tried to talk me out of it. They sat me down. I was like, no, you're all lovely, but I, this just isn't for me. And I got home and my parents were like, okay, they kind of gave me a couple of weeks to process all of that. And what are you going to do? What do you think you want what to are do you doing next? Well, I've always wanted to be a reporter. Mm. I've always been fascinated by that. And so we figured out how to do that. I got myself an internship. I, 
you know, interviewed anyone I could as far as finding out how to do what I needed to do. I got that internship at that TV station I had said no to um, when I was in college. I interned there, they put me on air. I went to Stanford, did their broadcast institute during the summer, and from there started getting my first jobs. Went to Yuma, Arizona for about a year and a half, two years. I was the main evening oh, there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, made $17,000 a year to be the main anchor. Oh, and um, it was- hey, But you know what, to yeah. take the main anchor job anywhere when you first get out is a big yeah. deal, right? You yeah. do that. And so I went from there to Reno to Sacramento, which was my dream job. And um, it's so funny now as we um, are in this day and age of manifesting and visualizing and all these things that people have, you know, made a million dollars off of teaching us all how to do. It was innate in me at that age because I would sit there, I would watch the news every night. I would record it on the, you know, the old VCRs, sit there and rewatch it back. I vision, I just pictured myself working at KCRA. I would see myself at the microphone. I would practice in my mind. And that was the job I got way sooner than I ever thought I would. And it was something I hadn't even tried for. The news director came to me. But don't you think that in part, like sometimes that happens because first of all, you said you went to a spiritual school. So sometimes I feel like, those things are already innate within us. We're born with it. Some people need to be taught mm -hmm. and some people are gifted. Like, you know, you were gifted to have the vision and sight of knowing your purpose early. Mm -hmm. So. And I love, I love to tell stories. I love to know what was going on. I love the sound of a helicopter would like excite me. Like I couldn't wait to know what was going on and could I be the first one there? Could I be the person to tell you the story? Could I be the person to give you the information you needed to know, mm -hmm. you know, to, to understand what was going on in the world? And, um, and of course, you know, back in the nineties, um, that was a very different time, you know, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't have our phones that give us information nonstop, you know? that was really what we relied on in life it would be the newspaper, the radio and the television. And so it was, it was a responsibility that I cherished and never took for granted, gladly worked the 13 hour days at times that I needed um, in miserable conditions. You know, um, they'd, I'd be covering snow. I would be in blizzards falling off of cliffs, you know, uh, covering fires. I was thinking of this yesterday because my 16 year old daughter who just walked through, um, we're doing or almost 16, we're doing the driver's training. And I'm in the car with her yesterday and I was thinking, I literally had this thought, I was like, I used to drive a live truck through walls of fire with my photographer shooting, wow. and I was less scared than I am with my daughter in the exactly. car. We're, we're always like this. It's, oh my gosh. It's so terrifying. And, um, but like it was, there was such an adrenaline rush to what I did that, you know, I loved it. And that job carried on from um, Sacramento to LA, where I was for 17 years. And I, you know, transitioned from being in the field, obviously, to in studio. Um, and it became more of an entertainment job um, at times, still combined with news. And I think one of the skills I had was that I could pivot on a dime. So mm -hmm. I could be doing the silliest thing at one moment. And then when you needed someone for breaking news, I was the person they would make sure I would get on the set to take care of whatever was going on. Do you think so, because you build trust really easily with your viewers? Um, that, I think it was that, but also just because I worked so hard mm -hmm. and I was good under pressure. I, I, you know, it would be those things. Um, I, so I did that. I did that for 30 years. And when that job ended and my career stopped at Fox, and that's where I had worked for 17 years, I kind of tried. This is a long time as a journalist. 30 so years together. Like in, in one network? That's huge. That's huge. And I just, you know, I, I, they were doing restructuring and they let go a lot of people. And honestly, they had a history also of letting go women over a certain age because there, I was one in a number of line of women that had been let go and, and women that were beloved in this town. And so, you know, it was, you know, that gave you some comfort, but also, you know, frustration as well that you think you hit 50, 52, 53, I'm 56 this year, I'll be 56. And you're like, I have still so much to offer, but so that you know, there's a lot that goes into it. There's budget, there's whatever. And, um, but they say, you know, to your point is that women in their fifties, it's their second coming. 
Yeah. You know, and so the fact of like a lot of companies letting go women in their, you know, late forties and fifties, it's really like, this is the time where they can maximize the, all the experience that they have. All the experience and we still look good. And if we don't look good, we're going to go find a way to make ourselves look good. You know, we're in a way, we're going to be okay. Exactly. And um, so I did start to work at um, CBS and I did two live reports for them, but the general manager did not like my hair or how I dressed and they wanted me to change that. And I thought, you know, I'm more than my hair. I'm more than my clothes though. And I don't want to change. I, I'm happy with yeah. how I look. And I don't think I knew in my heart that it wasn't going to be a place for me because if they didn't see the value of having someone who had 17 years of experience covering this market, who knew the ins and outs of this market okay. and had a loyal viewership, if you weren't going to see that, and on her second live report, suggest she change her hair and her clothes, then you're you're not really a fan of mine. Fast forward to this man was let go mm. the, under, you know, the Me Too movement. So there was a lot of, you know, things sometimes that were not in our control. And it was because of all of those reasons that I decided I wanted to start my website, which I called it, and I call it Happily Lisa, because after 30 years of seeing, I mean, obviously the best of, I think we report on the best of people as much as possible, but I saw the worst of the worst of the worst. Yeah. So I really wanted to focus on the things that make us happy in life. And so that's what's brought me to this point. And, and the website sat dormant for about a year and a half while I went through a divorce and, you know, wanted to really focus on making sure my children were okay. And yeah. all of a sudden I saw the value. And I think, I think the quarantine, like it did for you with um, doing these interviews, I saw the value of still being able to reach people and talk to Absolutely. people and, and stay in contact with people. And that I had created so much beautiful work on my website I wanted to rebrand it, relaunch it. And that's what we're doing in the next like two weeks that should um, be relaunched again. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about Happily Lisa, right? So we know that you wanted to deliver content that makes people happy. And, but from what I remember, and I know because I follow you, <laughs> is that um, you really crossed over a lot of different categories and segments. So tell us about the different segments that you do cover, because, you know, what I didn't say in the beginning is, you know, not only is she a lifelong storyteller, but she really is a, she's an influencer as well. Whenever I see anything that you do on beauty, for example, I'm like, ooh, I got to look that up because she will know who's the expert, right? So I'd love to hear more about that. Well, I think, you know, that comes from years of interviewing people and being here in LA and being able to, to reach out to people. I was able to pick up the phone and reach out to, you know, the top plastic surgeon or a, the top dermatologist and be able to talk to them and go into their offices and be able to do something. Um, and then, you know, on the other side, brands started reaching out to me to work with me because um, the people who follow me are very engaged. And I, I know you right. probably know about that, but um, brands want to work with you. Your How many followers you have is important, but also how engaged and actually how real those followers are. Because there are certainly women here in LA who are doing the influencing, who if you actually look at their engagement, you realize that a lot of their followers are bought. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we I've never bought a follower, you know, it's just pure. Um, most of my followers are here in LA, I think, because, you know, they grew up watching me or they, you know, they watched me grow up on air. And so there's, there's that uh, trust. So my engagement is really high mm -hmm. and that's what advertisers look for. And that's what brands look for when they want to partner. So you know, that's how I'm able to, you know, now restart my websites because I've been getting brand deals that I'm able to help put that money back into the website to continue to take pretty pictures. And, but, you know, not and always use it matters yeah. I mean, it, it, when you're an influencer and frankly, in anything, you know, people buy into something that looks good. Right. And, and it, that's kind of like what we were talking about in the beginning is the balance between what's real and not. Right. And so, yeah. 
I think, you know, uh, you do an amazing job of doing that. You know, for example, the fact that you have access to every pretty much big celebrity and or, you know, big doctor, big, big brands, everything, you know, you kind of provide the balance, which still makes it really accessible for people going back to that trust factor and the ability to connect with you. I think that's really, yeah. You know, and I mean, obviously on my Instagram page itself, you want it to look pretty on my stories is where it's messy. You know, those are the, that's where you see me with no makeup and, you know, my hair a mess and, you know, dogs running around crazy and um, yeah. all of that. I, and I think that's, that's where, that's also where I tell more of the stories, you know? Yes, exactly. So beyond beauty, is it, I mean, cause I remember you do cooking, but what mm-hmm. else, what other, what so other? We share, share a lot of recipes. Um, so those will all be coming back and updated. And um, so recipes, uh, travel as well. Um, oh, able to share. Travel someday. Yeah, I know. We were able to uh, go this summer down to Terranea, which was oh, okay, beautiful. That's nice. Yeah. And that, but that was the only, that's the only thing I've done in the past year. Um, it's just because, hard to believe. Yeah. It's, it's sometimes I feel like we're in a twilight zone and I'll look at my kids or I'll say to one of my sisters on the phone, I'll be like, is like, is this really real? And everyone, I'm the only one in LA and you know, they're my, I have a sister in Nashville where life is normal, you know, almost. Exactly. And um, Oh, I know Nashville's like totally different. I know. Yeah. So uh, hopefully yeah. we they're get, all in school. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So hopefully we can get back there at some point, but yeah, so it's cooking restaurants. Um, it's diff- trying different exercises. I, I think that LA is such a great place to be able to share because I think it's New York and LA, you know, those are where really? the trends always start and happen. So, uh, I was able to go do before a lot of the great exercise classes and I highlight those and then the quirky things. And then now, because I also work for NBC, on their lifestyle show, it's called California Live. And it, again, it kind of just highlights all that is special about California. Those will be able to live on the website as well. So Uh-oh, that's I, great. Tell I me, just, about, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, I was gonna say, I love, you know, to be able to tell someone's story, to shine a little bit of a light on something. And um, I, I will tell you there, my shine a light is the catchphrase that, that, um, is important, but it also became like an inside joke for me because a girlfriend and I, we were on air together and we had to interview um, Corey Feldman, you know, who is a child actors, you know, and has had a lot of trials and tribulations and his book, he kept using the word shine a light. So that was like our catchphrase, uh-huh. you know, it was kind of like our little like catchphrase between us, but it really is true. Like if you can shine your little light on something, um, you don't know who and how you're going to touch someone. And I get, you know, people comment on my pictures, all, obviously all the time, but the DMs I get from women, women of a certain age, women who have gone through divorces, women who have lost their jobs and started trying to start new careers. Those are the, that's when you know you're, you're on the right path and you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Um, when you're inspiring, when you're reaching your true audience, by the way, yeah, when you're yeah. inspiring them, to try new things that, I mean, that's really why you feature so much lifestyle stuff is really to give people the opportunity to have perspective on like, well, have you looked at this? Have you thought about that? <laughs> you know? And um, I, I have a question for you is that, you know, uh, because I, I find you inspirational too. I mean, we're peers, but we're, it, you know, we're, we came from different backgrounds and fields. So if I was somebody that was just getting started and and wanted to be a blogger or an influencer, and you know, there are so many of them out there, you know, that's struggling to get their message out there properly. What what are your recommendations? I you don't look at those numbers (laughs) because those numbers, those those are those can be depressing and you and you don't always understand. Don't think don't compare yourself to anyone else. Um, and that goes obviously for, for any career, but you have to believe in what you're doing and why you're doing it and that it's going to connect with someone. So you may have 
a thousand followers, or you may have, you know, nearly 50,000 followers, but it really matters how you're connecting to those people. And if they all feel special, that's what I try and write back to everyone. I try and respond to everyone's DM. I try and, you know, respond to people's comments because for me, if you've taken the time to acknowledge my thought that I put out for the day, I want to make sure I acknowledge you mm -hmm. and um, don't that get caught a lot up. about your character. You know, <laughs> you know it does. It's, it's actually says a lot about your soul that you that's your desire because you know, um, so many people that have the number of followers that you have would have somebody else either respond for them or whatever. It's so beautiful that you will take the time to do that for your followers. Well, it, because they've taken the time to look yeah, at me. But it's yours. You're basically saying, going back to shine the light, you're, yeah. you're basically saying that like, I, you see the light in me and I see the light in you, you know, like, and I want to, I want to give back to you just as much as it's the acknowledgement, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And people have said such beautiful things and, um, people shared their personal stories with me, you know, you know, and it's not, you know, the person from Indonesia trying to get money from you, you know, it's not like Absolutely. that. Like, exactly. I know that guy too. <laughs> so tell me, I have a question. What would you say the best thing you did when you were working as a journalist and then like comparatively what's been the highlight of you being an entrepreneur um the best oh gosh the best i know there's so many <laughs> you, can, uh, you can give me in the top 10. <laughs> um that's why i think that's why i feel blessed in that like i had a job that allowed me like the experience of a lifetime, sometimes almost every week, you know? So um, whether it was, I mean, I always do go back to when I was in Reno at my second, I would have been kind of like my second, third job. And I was covering um, a horrible, horrible explosion and a little boy had been burned. And it was because the dad had left, he was playing with an empty gas can. He wasn't being, it was, and it was a really, really poor family. And it, you know, this is the bad part of the news where you have to like basically go wait and pray on the family to try and to get an interview from them. And, you know, I finally was able to get the interview with the family, their kids like in covered in head to toe burns. It was horrible and was in a born ward. And I had to go to the born ward and see what was going on. And um, the mom looked at me and said, you know, he doesn't remember it, but all he ever wanted to do was go in a helicopter. Of course, he was hella backed out of the hell out of the um, explosion scene. Um, but he just really would love to be able to go in a helicopter someday. I was like, oh, okay. And so I went back to my news director. I'm like, okay, you made me go <laughs> and like terrorize this family, not terrorize them, but yes, like, right. yes, having like, to approach them during those times. Yeah. Like, so um, we're taking the helicopter and we're going to go pick him up. And he looked at me, he's like, Lisa, he goes, that's that, you know, jet fuel, all the, all the expenses. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. Like, oh. He's like, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Like, I don't care. And you're like, and, yeah, this kid needs it. Yeah. And we did it. And we landed in his high school field and his middle school field and picked him up and took him for a helicopter ride. Wow. And um, it was, you know, it, it, I'll never forget the look on his face, the look on his family's face. Um, so, I mean, you know, there's stories like that and there's so many stories like that yes. of, of everyday people, you know? And then there are, of course, um, meeting your icons and your, you know- Who's your top icon? Who's your top icon? Um, being able to That's interview so like Barbara Walters, being oh, able to yeah, interview wow. like Jane Polly. I like, was like basically crying over the yeah. corner, so nervous to interview her. Um, you know, people that you've always had crushes on, you know, like, George Clooney never would walk by without stopping and being Lisa and throwing out his arms and giving me a big hug oh and kiss, you know, so things, you know, like the fun moments like that, having people come on the show and being able to have, you know, sweet, intimate moments with them, you know, and then there were the crazy, I, I think I had, it was like Solange um, was, we were interviewing her, but I had my phone like, like this <laughs> on my lap because 
Elsie was um, performing at Village School. Oh. It was one of the morning talent shows and I couldn't leave work. And so I was live streaming her in my lap while I've got salon chanels over here. And the whole newsroom knew that I was missing it. And so they were watching on closed circuit TV. Oh. And when it was over, the interview got done just as she was done. They came running out and everyone it was like, you know, moments like that, being able to have my kids come on air with me yeah. and take special trips. It's, that, so that has been all amazing. My website for me is just being able to do the some of the same things and translating that energy and that happiness into the website. And because it's sat dormant for the past now, it's going to be two years this month that I haven't done anything on it. Wow, that's shocking for me to hear yeah. from you. Because when I look at everything, I haven't been on the website in forever, probably four years ago when you started. Yeah. And so you know, for me, I'm like, wow, but I see you're doing so much. So, but that's, you know, life also changes because so much has transferred over to Instagram and it's yes. so instant and you can put stuff there even faster than you can on your blog. And, you know, whether or not blogs and websites are still as critical, they're still going to always be yours. You know, who knows? Instagram can yank something at any given time. So yeah. I think that's having that base for everything. So it's still going to be a portal that I can I have agree. all my stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel like websites, uh, for now at least, you know, are definitely going to still play a role from the stamp. It gives you the further credibility. It's yeah. like, if you really want to get hired, you need to make sure your website's in order. Yeah, it's you know? going to be a portal for, you know, all my videos, my recipes, my appearances on television, um, the it, the interviews I do with people, you know, we'll put this on that, you know, like just yeah. everything. It's going to be, you know, a place where hopefully people can go to. And once we get going again in the next two or three weeks, you know, those stories will live on. Plus, we'll still be able to bring people new recipes, new inspiration. New so it sounds like what you love about your current uh, experience is everything you're creating it. You're not, it's your own, um, like feel fully curated by you versus, yeah. you know, on the, on the side of when you work with for a company, it can be difficult because you're, the guidelines are set by them in some ways. 100%. And here I can do it on my own schedule. Um, you know, especially with you know, this year and my kids. And, and home. Exactly. Well, I just have one last question because I want to be respectful of your time and everything. So my question for you is, you know, um, you spoke and we spoke about it a little bit before we got on uh, the call, but can you speak a little bit to your thought process around, you know, we know, like I said in the beginning, one in four women are leaving the workforce. And I mean, speak a little bit about like your concern for the women that are, you know, talented women that are in their late 30s, 40s and 50s. Like, what do you say to them? What do you recommend for them to get started and really not like address their fears? You know, look, we're all in this together. We are all in this together. Um, and so we understand the fears that you have. Uh, we've all been there. You know, we've sat on a set where someone younger and prettier walked in. And, you know, I have found for myself that always being gracious and knowing that there is enough to go around, you mm -hmm. know, and just because someone else is getting something right now, it that should be your sign that there's going to be something still available for you. It doesn't mean that that's going to lack for you. Mm -hmm. And um, I interviewed, we, uh, we, you and I were going to try and go for a walk. Uh, yes, we still are. <laughs> we were able to because I was interviewing um, an actor. Yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> that's okay. Um, but it's, it's, it's for something that I'm working on. And um, this is someone who's going to be 70 and is stunning and beautiful. And we were talking because what we're working on has to do with age as well. And, and she said, I said, you know, 50 is hard once you hit the news in the news business. And she goes, oh, honey, like 40 for actress and you're done. She goes, that's why I've always had to reinvent myself. And you have to do it, I think, with grace mm -hmm. and with happiness. And just know that I don't think we ever get to just rest on our laurels in life. I think you always have to continue moving forward. Besides who wants to just sit and not, you know? So yeah. 
you, you do have to work just as hard. And yeah, someone else might get that promotion that you want. Um, you might be afraid to go out on your own. You might take a, you know, hit financially. Um, and who hasn't, you know, especially this past year. But there are ways to be smart about it all. And sometimes it's through those, I, I know for myself, through the most painful of moments in the past couple of years and the most financially stressing times the past couple of years have been truly the biggest growth for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm thankful for them, you know? Yeah. I'm so grateful that you share in, you know, such a direct poignant way for people because really it, that's what life is. If we're not growing, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we should continue to strive to grow because no matter what age we are, we're not all knowing. We, we need to continue learning, right? And, and I, I think you, like um, myself, we both really actually love to talk to the younger generation because we learn from them, you know, because there are ways they do things that we don't do that I feel like I'm like, oh, that's a good suggestion. I'll have to take you up on that. So anyways, well, I want to thank you for your time. And I'm so grateful for, um, you know, these special moments together. I do want to just allow you to share anything with the audience as far as, you know, how to reach you via Instagram or your website or anything else that you'd like to share. Just um, on Instagram, it's Lisa Breckenridge. I think Facebook, it's the official Lisa Breckenridge. I think that's what it is. Um, and then the I website is- I'm just kidding. I know, I know. The website is Happily Lisa and it's up now, but it will be refreshed and just all kind of fancied up for 2021 in, in about the next two to three weeks. So oh, well, the, I can yeah. hardly wait to see it. So I really congratulate you on your success and it's a huge transition to go out on your own and be as successful as you have uh, been able to, to manifest, I mean, truly manifest as we would say. So anyways, um, thank you for your time and um, super grateful. Thank you. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. And thanks anyone who still stayed through this past 30 minutes. If you're still they watching, we appreciate it. Believe it or not, speaking of loyal followers, I get DMs all the time about like, that was a great interview. I really like her. So <laughs>